Hello, everyone. Welcome to TV Literate, the podcast that unapologetically enjoys trashy TV. I'm Jillian. And I'm Megan. And Hell we're back. Yeah. We're back. Yay. We apologize for not releasing an episode last week, but um, if we announced it on our social medias, but we, if you didn't know, both of us are chronically ill in <laughs> several different ways. And sometimes... It, they just kick your ass and you just yeah. gotta be you gotta just try again next week yeah on the same note I, I the whole reason that it was all fucked up was because i have a bone tumor on my leg which is insane it's not cancer yeah. i'm just growing a new bone because i needed more bones to be more spooky i mean 206 is not enough yeah, I got 207, bitches. Fuck yeah, you're so much better than any of us. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <sighs> it hurts to be this good. But um, <laughs> yes, so I am getting surgery on that at the end of June, so our schedule may get a little wonky, but we're going to try and pre-record a couple episodes so that we don't yeah. end up missing a week again. Just thought I'd let you guys know. Yeah, just a heads up. We're going to try not to miss any episodes, but our schedule might be a little different in the next several weeks, but... We're going to try to make it as normal as possible. I mean, I'm still kind of hoping that it has, like, teeth. I mean, that would be twin. awesome. Yeah. That I'd would keep be cool. It then. I'd Fuck keep yeah. it in a I'd little jar. Like pet. <laughs> yeah. You got to name it. It'd be a whole, a whole thing. Yes. It's like your child. You grew that. It's your child. Like, it's my leg child. Exactly. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, Jillian. <laughs> it's not it fucking hurts man yeah yeah it sucks okay let's I think move I should, on i think i should name it spurgeon oh hell yeah the demon bone demon tumor seed. spurgeon yeah. it fits perfectly okay we're getting spurgeon removed <laughs> bye spurgeon <laughs> later skater later okay so jillian what mm-hmm. have you been watching the last couple of weeks Oh my god. So we've been on a really big like catch up on all of the trash like early 2000s horror that we didn't see. So like oh, we nice. watched like What Lies Beneath. Oh fuck yeah. Yeah. I, it's been a while since I've seen that one but I remember it. I never had watched it because it came out at a time where I was still too anxious to really enjoy horror movies. Mm. So I got so scared by the trailer that I just couldn't handle it. Yeah. And now I'm like okay no this is amazing. Like good for her. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't really remember, like, specifics, but I do remember enjoying it whenever I watched it. Yeah. Which was a long time ago, to be fair. Well, it's still good. It still holds up. That's good. Maybe I'll have to put it on my list. You should. Of rewatches. But we also we also watched, binged, all of Mare of Easttown this past weekend. Oh, okay. I haven't watched any of that. I thought it was not going to be that good, but <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Just watch it all. I don't want to spoil any of it. HBO Max. What is it even about? Like, just like a general, I don't even really know okay. what it's about. So Kate Winslet is a detective in a small town um, and they have a girl go missing and she can't solve it. And then another girl turns up dead and it starts this whole thing. And okay. it kind of hinges on the fact that she recently lost her son to suicide. So okay. that's the like complexity of her character. That intrigues me. Yeah, it's really good. It's only seven episodes, but they're each like an hour and ten minutes, so it's a lot, but oh my god, it was so good, and everyone's like freaking out about it. I'll have to put it on our our list, because I think that's something that Kyla and I would both like to watch. Yeah, I think Kyla would like it. It's very well done. Like, it's very, like, cinematically cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and the other thing that we started, because I literally have just been sitting on the couch because MRIs fucking suck, <laughs> Yeah. Um, is we started watching on Discovery Plus, Who the Fuck Did I Marry, or Who the Bleep Did I Marry is what they call okay. it. Okay, yes. It's really good. Like I've, seen a, I've seen a couple episodes of that in, a long time ago, and I remember it being like, holy shit, fuck. Yeah, because like, most of the time we will skip episodes in like Discovery trash true crime stuff that are like husbands abusing wives because we're like that's not surprising men are trash so this was amazing because it's like my husband turned out to be a cuban spy yeah i want to be fully shocked at these secrets yeah i don't want to exploit your abuse i want to exploit your story exactly you're marrying a cuban spy please exactly please it was so good it's so good we're only like halfway through the first season but i think we found our new fear thy neighbor hell yeah I'm happy for you guys. Thank you. What have you guys been watching? 
So this is the last week I'm going to talk about it, I promise, because we're <laughs> literally going to finish it tonight. But we're, we've been finishing up True Blood. We have like Ooh. three episodes left, I think. And so yeah. we're finishing it tonight. I'm actually like kind of sad because I've really enjoyed rewatching it. Like I've even enjoyed rewatching the later seasons, which I don't really remember enjoying when I first watched them. Like it was just yeah. fun, even though they weren't as good as the first few seasons. But like as a whole, it's just a fun show and I love the characters and it's just it's so good. I yeah. mean it's bad, but it's good. I mean that's it's the bad premise good. of this show, so it's fine, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Um so I'm I'm kinda sad about it, but that's why I was thinking maybe we can watch Mayor Beast Town now. We need mm-hmm. something new. To fill the hole. Yeah, exactly. Other than that, um I've been watching I started watching Cruel Summer, which oh, yeah? is it's a free form show, I think, but I've been watching. It's on Hulu, and it's like a weekly release show. But like a se- like a lot of it's out already. It started like a while ago, and it's basically about. It's like every episode is one day, but it's like three years apart on the same day, and it's telling the story huh. of this girl who was like abducted, um, and like held hostage, and then released like a year later, and then how. Ha- how this other girl's story like entwines with that and like maybe she knew about it and didn't tell anyone and it's like full trash i mean it's a fucking freeform show like abc family like come on yeah but it's been it's been fun so i oh man it's a good like summer mystery trash show oh i'm here for that i had read it like read the name of it on twitter and someone said Mm -hmm. it's it's a freeform show like don't go in there with like super high exactly. expectations and i was like but what's oh, it yeah. about <laughs> yeah it's like a it's a it's a mystery like kind of thriller type thing i love uh, it's that it's interesting for sure yeah and then other than that i've been really into <laughs> animal crossing like i mean i've always been into animal crossing not always but like over the past year but mm-hmm. i've been really into it the last couple of weeks so i've been like really into watching people stream animal crossing while i play animal crossing for like wow. inspo yeah you're a real so. gamer i love it i'm such a gamer you're such a gamer i mean i don't even watch streams <laughs> i just this is like the first time i've ever really done it it's been fun because like i with animal crossing in particular Mm-hmm. There's just like so many things you can do that I don't even like really know much about because I didn't play Animal Crossing at all before um, this one. Yeah, and I don't know. I'm just like not super gamey in general, so there, there's a lot of stuff that like I need to see people do first before I do oh, yeah. it. You know? Yeah, I mean Animal Crossing and like Sims and Minecraft all kind of lend themselves to exactly. being streamed. I was like strum, <laughs> strummed, strummed, stroom. Yes. yeah no I, I think that's cool i've watched a couple was- streams but like most of the time i can't do it yeah i think it's gotta be for me it would like it would have to be a really specific game that i'm like really into at the time like i would have to yeah. be really interested in it i guess it's kind of like watching like painting stuff on instagram it's right. like stuff that you want to get ideas for you want to you want to exactly. create exactly all right so now that we've caught up on our watching habits over the past couple weeks let's get into it we're going back and we are finishing up season two of bringing up Bates. hell yeah because there's nothing we love more than shitting on fundies fundies yeah yeah i mean literally just give me trash fundies to rag on and i will be happy it's yeah that's all i need that's my nourishment <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a breatharian. I'm not a vegetarian. I am a, a trash arian. <laughs> trash arian. A fundy trash arian to be <laughs> specific. God, it feels like we're describing plaths, trash arians. Oh god. Oh <laughs> lord. Sorry. All right. So, let's let's get into it. With episode 8, which is called Life Lessons. So, <sighs> This episode kind of starts off with Gil talking about how he learned at age 18 how beneficial homeschooling is, which is like, where did he learn this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not that like I just to be clear, I'm not like anti homeschool in general. I think that homeschool definitely has its place. It's definitely valid. Lots of kids excel at homeschool. Lots of kids need you know, specific tailored curricula and instruction. And I totally mm-hmm. get that. And I think it's valid, but like, this isn't it, that 
<laughs> this is not that. Yes. Religious homeschooling is very different than like needs based homeschooling. Exactly. <laughs> um, so anyway, they decided like before they even had kids, I think Kelly and Gil decided that they were going to be homeschooled. Yeah. Um, I did like that this episode basically started with Kelly and the kids at the table and it's like they're talking about homeschooling. But then she says, all right, put your Bibles on the Bible shelf. Yeah. And I'm like, so it was yeah. just Bible study. Is that school? Right. Right. Yeah. I wonder like how much of it is Bible study and how much of it is like academic lessons. Yeah. I mean, Tennessee might not have a, a whole lot of state oversight there. <laughs> Would not surprise me at all. Mm-mm. Yeah, so I have a quote from Kelly, which is, I describe our schooling like a three-ring circus because I have kindergarten through seniors in high school, which sounds like a goddamn nightmare to me. It does. It honestly sounds horrible. I think the older kids are just teaching themselves and teaching their siblings. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the, at one point... Um, like it was kind of lo like they it was kind of like looking like oh wow they kind of like have their shit together for homeschool and stuff and then all of a sudden Kelly was like yeah the older kids volunteered to help the younger kids to like tutor the younger kids and I'm like sure they volunteered and so mm -hmm. basically now we find out that the older kids are teaching the younger kids which yeah yeah she was all like oh you know I have a degree and I have a minor yeah. in special education and I was like oh okay so maybe she actually knows a little bit and then yeah no her children are teaching children. I forgot to mention the college degree, but yeah, when she said that, I was like, oh, wow, at least like she has, I mean, I, I wouldn't say she's qualified to teach all of these kids. Yeah, but she has like lessons. pedagogical knowledge. Right. She's certainly more qualified than Michelle Duggar, at least. God, yeah. But she can tell time. But like now, like she's not even doing all the teaching or mm -mm. even most of the teaching. So. Nope. But I guess now Tori is the main tutor. And yes. Tori is in college for her teaching degree, which yes, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> that seems like a lot of pressure to put on a 18, 19 year old, first of all. Def <laughs> definitely. I do think it is it the I don't know. It is nice to see at least that the kids are getting some outside education, even though it's at a Christian college that I'm not. Yeah. I don't really know the I, I don't really know what their lessons look like but I, I think it's probably better than nothing yeah and it's like school. public school christians i assume would go there right so right it's yeah, fine I, it is what it yeah. is so i mean at least i don't know at least they're getting some sort of education at least the girl like it's it was nice to see tori a girl mm -hmm. being offered that opportunity yeah it does not seem to be the case in all fundy families that yeah no you know, girls, girls don't girls usually get treated. to go to college unless they're going right. to college for nursing or yeah nursing <laughs> nursing yeah midwifery um, i did so okay so we're talking about this college and it's called crown college and i sent you the website mm -hmm. but if any of our listeners want to have a really horrifying but enjoyable horror <laughs> go on their website it has eagles and American flag vistas and it's a biblical show. fucking stuff at the top. I don't know. It's hilarious and ridiculous. And I don't know how that's like an accredited institution, but maybe it's not because I've never heard of it. Yeah. Their website did not look like <laughs> real. I don't even No, It looked like a fake. It looked completely fake. I don't even know how to describe it. I, I was horrified when it I was went on like their Fox News University. It, yes, it was like the Trump University. Mm -hmm. God, yeah, it looks it looks wild. But at least she gets to meet other people. True. And socialize and get a degree. True. That is good. So moving on, because flying is one, apparently one of the few hobbies that Fundy Boys can have, mm -hmm. Nathan is interested in getting his pilot's license. Um, so he basically knew somebody who knew a pilot instructor who was also a pastor mm -hmm. which who has made it part of his mission to teach people how to use aviation for yep, different which mission is work really just like nathan not wanting to pay for a uh, instructor right at all which is fine whatever but i don't know this whole thing with fundies and planes and like there's like it's the weird so child weird. trafficking and the adoption rings and stuff i don't know it's weird it's it's bizarre it's it seems like a strange like i'm 
all for like people interested in aviation but it seems like why are so many people in this community so interested in aviation it seems like not that normal of a hobby Mm -mm. and kind of an expensive hobby like yeah planes are not cheap (laughs) no not at all (laughs) believe it or not they're not that cheap (laughs) who'd have thunk it also i have a kind of scary quote from kelly who says (laughs) quote when he was younger, Nathan was dyslexic. I don't know. Maybe they beat it out of him. Like, I just, I, I, the way that this was said and the way that it was said so flippantly made me think that, like, they just, like, I don't even know. I don't know either. Like, I heard that part and I thought it was weird. But then, like, why is that even relevant? Like, can he not read, like, street signs or, like, instruments? Why are you bringing know. this up at this point? Yeah. Yeah, she was like, he was dyslexic, but he's fi- like, he could he could drive now, and he it's can like, read what? now. You're like, oh, okay. It was just very strange. Maybe Nathan the way has was- just not read a single word since he started reading. He just is like, nope, I'm done. That's it. You gotta that, read it to me. Honestly, does not seem far from the truth. <laughs> Let's be real. Um. Anyway, I'm just kind of, I'm just mostly like, like sentences like that make me so concerned for like that these kids are not getting the attention that they need, the individual attention and like treatment or help that they might need. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's kind of horrifying to think about. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to see how Nathan goes. I mean, I know he's grown up now, so we'll see if he can actually read. Yeah. I mean, he's still alive. So there's that. It's what they want us to believe. No. <laughs> True. You never know. <sighs> oh, I loved um, because there are still no swings on the swing set from whenever we were talking about that swing set that they made and never <sighs> finished. Um, Gil decided to incorporate manual labor with his children into homeschool lesson uh-huh. to get the swing set done. Yeah. You know, you learn it in school. Swing set crafting from two pieces of wood and two ropes. I swear to God, that's I would not. That swing set looked so fucking rickety as hell. I don't even know. They just threw the rope over it, the top. I like, know, and all the swings were like different lengths, like different heights, and like, like some were at an angle, and it was like nobody should get on the swing set. No, someone's gonna end up like twisted up in one, stuck up on the log. It looked God, bad. It was awful. I didn't actually even write any notes about this section, except, holy shit, they are still working on the fucking swing set. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (sighs) Anyway. I loved how, like, the swing set was supposed to be, like, a gift surprise to the little kids, and then Gil ended up making the little kids, like, make it for themselves. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, like, he was like, but we're gonna do it, but we're gonna teach them math lessons and, like, measuring and shit. And it's like, okay, okay, Gil, good try. That's a big give a man a fish and he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish and he exactly. eats for his life energy. Right. Um, so we go back to the Nathan plot line and we meet Mr. Glenn, who is the pilot instructor pastor guy. Yep. And we t- learn a little bit about, like, what it takes. Obviously, like, getting a pilot's license is not, like, just, like, a walk Something in the park. Apply. Exactly. There's like all different types of tests. There's written test, oral test, skills test, and then there's like different conditions you have to meet to, like drive or flying in the day, flying in the night, you know. Mm-hmm. Did you have to do that for driving here? What? Did you have to do that for driving your driver's license here? Did you have to have like logged hours? Um, so well in Ohio yeah. I, I didn't get my license until after I was 18, and so I didn't have to. But if you were 16, I think, you had to have, like, so many hours, like, driven with an adult or whatever. Yeah, we had to do that, too. And, like, I see all these movies and stuff where people are just like, oh, you go practice with your mom and dad, and then you just show up, and you take the test, yeah. and you're done. And I'm like, we had to do a lot more than that. <laughs> yeah, you. I think, and at least where I lived back in the day... If you got your license when you were 16, you had to, like, go to driving school, Mm -hmm. um, and you had to, like, pass the class and then have, like, so many hours logged. I think maybe with a parent and with an instructor. Mm -hmm. It was, like, kind of – it was, like – it was a lot. Yeah. That was my experience, too. And then I'm seeing, like, these kids in Tennessee just driving shit at 14. Don't really care. Scary as hell. (laughs) Scary as hell. 
I'm not entirely sure where this quote came from, but it's from Nathan at this part, and it's wind. It'll jump up and grab you. <laughs> yeah, that was him trying to take off, and he was not staying in the center of the runway, and nice. it, he, it just like jerked the plane over. I don't know. This whole thing, good. he's like, you know, I'm really good at the flying part, but the takeoff and the landing, and I'm like, those are the important parts. Yeah. Those are the ones that you die on. I was going to say, I think the, the flying part is like the easy part, right? Like that's, you yeah. don't really have to do that much once you're up there. Uh-uh, you just look at some buttons and steer. Right, right. Oh, it's scary. Yeah. But yeah, of course, he starts talking about how he wants to be in ministry long term. And so he's learning to fly so he can fly around the Philippines, which like reasonable because they're an island nation, but also still weird. It is weird. And she, he did like keep bringing up the Philippines in particular. And it's I like, mean, that's where all the Duggars went work. too. Yeah, it is weird. Like I was like, why is there such a focus on the Philippines with these people? I wonder. I don't know. Probably fucking the dictator of the Philippines who's, like, so super Christian Mm -hmm. that he's, like, killing gay people and drug users. So that's their vibe. I was wondering if, um, like, Nathan was on a mission with, like, John or John Duggar or something in the Philippines. Because I know John kept going to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And they, so I wonder if their missions overlapped or whatever. Yeah. Interesting. We'll have to do some digging. Dig it up. So back to Tori, she finished up her first semester at college and she got all A's, Mm -hmm. which is obviously very good. So they call Gil's mom, Janny, and tell her the good news. And she's sending Tori a gift card and this gift card will come back later. Mm -hmm. It's to Burlington. Yeah. Very exciting. mm, Exciting. Um, so then we get Nathan back again at the end of the episode. Nathan is flying home and everyone's very anxious because it's rainy and windy, but Mr. Glenn is flying with him because obviously he doesn't have his pilot license yet and that's right. not his plane. Um, <laughs> but, right. uh, he's like, oh, I gotta land real good so that my mom will fly with me and he does not land real good. No. He lands he real not. bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they lived, so yeah, they didn't that. crash. The plane and everyone inside it was fine. It yes. was just a bit uh, one wheeled. But yeah, a bit wobbly at the end. <laughs> God, can you imagine if it had ended with like, or like, they were filming that, and then he just fucking crashed it into the runway, and then they're like, "Well, do we air this or not?" God, they. I would hope they would air it, but they probably shouldn't. Probably um, not. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so the next episode is called The Wedding To-Do List. And so we open up with an extremely scripted telephone conversation between Brandon and Michael about how they can use the church, which uh-huh. obviously is something they had already established, but they needed like a scene where they said it to each other. Yeah. Yeah, on speakerphone so that they could both be excited about it. I don't know. Right. This end of the season got kind of weird with their directing, and they got like to be a little more TLC feeling by the end. Mm-hmm. I was noticing. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, no, it's okay. So they have the church, but there are some stipulations. They have to be gone by early evening because there's like a youth group lock in that night, mm-hmm. and they only have like four hours to set everything up that day. Like they have yeah. the they it just sounds like a nightmare, but it sounds exactly like something that the Bates would get themselves into. So oh yeah, it's not a fundy wedding if it's not last minute. No, not at all. So Brandon is coming into town to help with some of the wedding wedding planning mm-hmm. and to get a tuxedo and for them to try on rings and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's very exciting. Meanwhile, even more exciting is Lawson is getting his wisdom teeth out. God, <laughs> this whole section, I'm just like Lawson. Shut up, please. I cannot stand Lawson. I don't know if I've made that clear in past episodes, but cannot stand him. I think Lawson is a Spurgeon. He's a Jeremy for me. Oh, fuck. He's a Jeremy. (laughs) Definitely a Jeremy. So Lawson is really worried about what he might say after he wakes up from surgery. Mm -hmm. And the whole family is making fun of Lawson for his low pain tolerance and for being melodramatic, which is hilarious. It is. It's so funny. Um, they said that when he got his like front teeth pulled because like he had to make room for all of his teeth when his adult teeth were growing in, mm-hmm. you know, 
baby teeth, whatever. He apparently was like holding it and he's like, I'm bleeding to death because there was blood on the gauze. And I mean, I get the vibe because I hate dental work, but like, oh, me too. Honey, just yeah. button it up, get through it, and then go home and cry. <laughs> for real, for real. Um, do we want to just continue and do like all yeah. the wisdom teeth stuff? That, that would probably be the easiest. Yeah. So, um, the day of surgery, Gil is going with him and Kelly does not go because she does not handle medical procedures or blood very well. Which is wild. She had 19 children. I know. That's what they were saying. Like, she can handle the stuff herself, but she hates, I think, seeing her kids in pain or like her kids bleeding, which I guess makes sense. But yeah, but she like faints when yeah they bleed, which is not super helpful. No, not really. <laughs> uh, not at all Gil brings a camera to film everything that Lawson's mm-hmm. gonna say because obviously and of course you gotta take the up TV you wouldn't already be filming him anyways <laughs> so they just tell her they just t- talk about how Kelly is so bad at medical emergencies that one time she took a kid to the ER and had to be put in a bed herself because she got so overclumped about it mm-hmm. yeah <sighs> that's not good yep so Lawson survives the surgery. He pulls through. But I have to say, I loved seeing him struggle. Oh, my God. It, it was, was so funny. Really, because like, we've cathartic. all been there. We've all had, you know, little minor surgeries like this that make you feel mm-hmm. like shit. But he's just like a little, little angry baby. bag of potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got his like little head bandage on. And he's just he's just out of it. Yeah. He's just like, my legs don't work. I can't move. I'm going to fall. Poor yeah. little child. Not the really. nurses and Gil help him into his wheelchair and then get him into the car. Um, and then Lawson does something that, like, honestly, I would probably do. And he takes his phone out when he gets in the car and takes a selfie. And, like, that 100% would be, like, my first instinct. Mm-hmm. And they were all like, I can't believe he did that. And it's like, that would 100% be the first thing I did. Yeah. Like, I want to document it. And also, I want to see how weird see- I look. Exactly. And I want to make sure that it's that I have it documented. That would I feel, you know, bad relating to Lawson in any way. But like that would be my first instinct, too. I know. Again, a stopped clock is right twice a day. So I know. I know. I know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Everyone continues to make fun of him and call him a fish and a bubble eyed fit like a bubble eyed goldfish and a largemouth bass. Yeah, I love that everyone was just making fun of loss in this whole episode. It was great. It was really great. <laughs> yep. Okay, so going back to the wedding planning, mm-hmm. um, we have we meet Kim, who is Michael's wedding planner, and she's planned like I think all of the other Bates weddings. Yeah, she's most of she's them. the Miss Cindy. Yes, the Miss Cindy, but <laughs> less stressed out. Yeah, she seems, seems like. like very chill and just kind of pushy, but that's what you need in a wedding planner. Yeah, exactly. So Michael wants a southern rustic wedding with 500 to 800 people and quote anything less uh, anything under a thousand is a small <laughs> wedding. I know and Brandon then they did his talking head and he's like anything under 50 is a small wedding. So <laughs> yes, we're not yes. having a small wedding. <laughs> At least one of them realizes it. Yeah, I'm like Brandon's the normie like he may be like super religious fundamentalist weirdo but like he at least grew at least, up in a reasonable place. Yeah. Also, this is off topic, but he looks so much like one of my close friends when I was in high school. And um, that friend in particular is very flamboyantly gay. So he looks like a like straight-laced Christian version of my flamboyantly gay high school friend. And it's really, it throws me off so much. I mean, he does just look like he really would be in Billy Elliot. And he does. I love gay boys, so I'm not saying this meanly, but yeah, right. Brandon looks like a little gay boy. Well, I mean, I wasn't gonna come out and say it, but I'll say it. I'll do, I'll take the heat for this one. <laughs> okay, so Michael is adamant also about only spending two hundred and fifty dollars on flowers, which will get you like a flower. Mm-hmm. I think I spent like three hundred on my bouquet alone. Like flowers uh-huh. were some of the biggest expense. They are, yeah, for real. We ours weren't too bad because ours we used a lot of succulents, which mm-hmm. are a lot cheaper um, for our centerpieces. But two hundred fifty dollars. It was a lot more than two hundred fifty dollars. I'll tell yeah. you that much. Yeah, the only thing we spent money on was my bouquet and my. I got a succulent crown. 
Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. Hell I saw yeah. pictures of it. Um, but everything else we did silk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we actually still have one of our centerpieces, um, and a lot of our some of our bridal party and like family have centerpieces from our wedding too, and it's succulents, so they're still alive and it's That's cute. Just I know. Cool. I yeah. love all the succulents because we have some that are still from like our wedding too, and I'm like, yeah, it's like a nice little <sighs> souvenir to have from your wedding. That's like, much alive. better than freezer cake. Uh yeah, no thanks. We ate our cake right away, by the way. Yeah, we did too. I we had like a chocolate <laughs> bourbon cake, so Ooh. Yeah, you're <laughs> not gonna leave that for a year. Fuck that. Mm-mm. So Brandon says the quote that I think every fundy man on these shows always says during wedding planning, which is there's a lot more to planning these things than I thought. <laughs> I know they're always so surprised. You're like, honey, what did you think happened? Like, you've been to a lot of weddings, I'm sure. Like, do you think they just materialize out of thin air? Like, everything needs to be planned. God, I don't know. Yeah, they just have no concept of planning. No, not at all, or time, or anything. Yeah. Um. Of course, Gil comes in and says, "I hear we're talking about budget," and he's like, "Michael is my simplest and most resourceful child, so he's not too worried that she's gonna blow the budget." Oh, good. Good, good. Yeah. I mean, Michael definitely seems to be very, like, budget conscious and, like, trying to save money at any... Which is fair. I mean, weddings are fucking expensive. Yeah. Um, Okay, so then they go to a jeweler's to go look at wedding bands. And, of course, they have to bring chaperones. So they have Tori and Carlin. (laughs) It was so funny because they did... they didn't mention the chaperone part like the word chaperone until a little bit later on and i like complete i don't know i forgot what i was watching yeah. and i was like why would tori and carlin go with them like why I would, and i was like oh wait they need someone to babysit them i forgot yep to make sure that they aren't banging at the jewelry store god and they were so annoying like tori and carlin together are <sighs> like i hate to be like that but like they're they and they're the type of people who they don't know when to give their opinion and when to shut the fuck up. Yeah. I mean, they're 16-year-old girls, basically, at this point. Yeah. And, like, no one likes 16-year-old girls. Not even 16-year-old girls. We just have to get through it. And thank God most of us were not getting through it on fucking camera. That is the goddamn truth. I was insufferable. Not that I'm still not, but I was way more insufferable. <laughs> yeah, like, now I have it. more concept of, like, how my words impact other people. I'm still an asshole. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um but oh god yeah they were annoying all the rings were gross and brandon yeah. was like i didn't even think about the fact with her engagement ring that she'd need a wedding band and i'm like yes we understand you are a fundamentalist man you do not think ahead yes exactly we get it we we, we understand it's clear to us so the other the last like thing they do while brandon is in town is they go tux shopping mm-hmm. for brandon um and so their colors are pink and brown because they got inspirations from the cherry blossoms which are part of their engagement um Mm -hmm. and so they're getting a brown tux with a khaki vest yeah and they tried a pink vest and it was bad yeah the khaki vest is slightly better it is very much what i imagine a minister would wear yeah like a hundred percent yeah like, he's going to keep that, that suit, and he's going to wear it to give some sermons. Definitely. Definitely. I just... Okay, so have you seen pictures of the wedding? I haven't. No, okay. I haven't looked at I'm all. so excited, because I've looked at a couple, because when I look for pictures, I see things. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's it's so bad. Oh, good. <laughs> I mean, really I bad. didn't have a lot of faith in it, but yeah, it's good to know. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, they did not pull it off. Let me just say that. <laughs> Tori and Carlin are really annoying here as well. Yeah, and they're oh, obviously it's... just very bored, which is yeah. reasonable. You don't want to yeah. go tux shopping for not anyone you really yeah. care about. <laughs> You're right. just chaperoning. Um, they play pool at the tux store because there's a pool table. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the end of that episode. That was a, a short, boring episode. Pretty much. Yeah. So moving on to episode 10, Aaron's Little Miracle. Oh, man. Oh, man. Aaron's going to pop that baby out. And she she fucking will. <laughs> she, uh, that, she shot that baby out. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. Holy yeah. shit. But um, so baby Carson will be here any day now. And Aaron and Chad are kind of finalizing the nursery 
Um, and we see all the cool stuff that Chad has made for the nursery because Chad is does everything and he's, he's Wonder handy. Man. Yeah. Handy man. He just seems like a good dude. I'm He does. He does. He seems like a nice guy. He does. I agree. Um, we get a lot of miscarriage flashbacks because of course. Uh-huh. We gotta of really course. rub that in. Right. Can't just be mentioned. Must see the tears. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we also talk a little bit about how premature labor is a threat um, with her clotting issues. And so they're kind of trying to get everything together early. There's a lot of like kind of scariness around her delivery because of all of her clotting issues and like the yeah. medication she's been on. Yeah, and, she's on yeah. blood thinners, could accidentally clot the baby off. So many things go wrong. Yeah, not great. Kelly's sister Kay is making Michael and Brandel. <laughs> Michael and Michael, Brandela. Michael and Brandela. <laughs> Michael and Brandon's wedding cake. And she's made like all the wedding cakes before. Um, so while Brandon is in town, they are doing some cake testing. And the cake looks amazing that they were yeah. trying. Like I really wanted some. It looks well, so and, like good. they were like full ass layer cake too. Like she didn't yeah. just bake like a little pancake or a cupcake of each yeah, cake. Yeah, it was like a full like piece of cake. And it was like a million different flavors. Yeah. They all looked really yummy. Uh, yeah, um, they ended up going with strawberry for the flavor, and they're doing like a cherry blossom design on the cake because of the theme. Mm-hmm. Uh, do we want to just like do all the wedding stuff? Yeah, let's just get that I out of the way. Since that's like the secondary thing, then yeah, we can just yeah. kind of breeze through it. Um, so Michael starts showing the family dresses, <laughs> the bridesmaids' dresses, the flower girl dresses, um, made of honor for. Kelly. Kelly. Thank you. I was like, Michelle. 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 <laughs> the Michelle of the family. God, Kelly. yeah. Yeah. Mom. Mom Michelle. No. <laughs> yeah. So she said that um, Aaron, Alyssa, and Tori, <clears throat> some of Brandon's sisters, and one of Michael's friends are going to be her bridesmaids, and then Kelly is going to be her maid of honor. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they look at dresses. We get told that the flower girl dress is not going to be in the mocha, but in khaki. Oh, great. To match the vest of Brandon in his brown and khaki ensemble. Uh, Just so much brown. So many shades of brown. So much brown. I think that's the wedding stuff. Okay, so let's get into the meat of this. The big parts of this episode. Let's get into the little miracle season. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Season of life. Season of life. Okay, so Aaron and Chad are going on a one-night trip on a baby moon. Because mm-hmm. they know it's going to be their last time where it's just the two of them together with no baby at home to worry about. And Chad's surprising her with where it is. So he just tells her to bring some casual clothes, comfy clothes, maybe a dress, be cute, whatever. Um, <laughs> and it's not too far away in case she goes into early labor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this so. was really sweet and thoughtful. It was. And like just the right amount of stuff. Because like I... I would I feel like a like a whole a whole baby moon like a trip and like like that's too much especially for Aaron who's had like a really hard pregnancy mm-hmm. and but like a little nice surprise you know when he actually really thought nice. about all the details exactly it's it was really really nice yeah um so he ends up taking her to Knoxville which mm-hmm. was cute he got mm-hmm. them a hotel there and it had like rose petals on the bed and some gift baskets because he knows how she loves gift baskets. Which oh yeah, who doesn't love gift, this, gift baskets? This episode was the episode where I was like, do I really hate these people or do I actually like them? And I'm like, okay, yeah. I just like Aaron and Chad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Most yeah, yeah. We'll get we'll get into more hatred soon. Don't worry. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so um, he also lets, takes her to a salon and gets her nail lets her get her nails done. And apparently Chad often does her nails for her. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was sweet. That was very cute. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Is that all that they do? Oh wait, wait. No. Um, no. They go into antique shops. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. And they look at furniture, and Chad gets some like ideas because he's thinking of like refinishing furniture as like a side business at some point. Because I mean, it seems reasonable. He's a crafty dude. Yeah, I mean, why not? And that's like a good. I don't know. I feel like that would be a good, like, you you could potentially make a lot of money off of that. Mm-hmm. And, like, if you're good at it, then it's, like. Yeah. Yeah. You if know. you're good at it and you have some money to put into it initially. Right. Yeah. Why not? Why not? And you can always start it as an after work kind of 
job. Exactly. Like, it doesn't have to. It's just, like, what you do in your free time or whatever. Yeah, which I we, I don't think we knew that Chad worked at a metal recycling company, but that sounds like a terrible job. Yep, sure does. Like, garbage man also sounds like a terrible job. And, like, I'm glad garbage people exist and that we pay them a lot of money because that seems like a shitty fucking job. Uh, sure does. And metal recycling seems so sharp. It, it could seems, get cut. It seems, yeah, it seems like it could be potentially painful. And loud. Oh, God, yeah, definitely. So loud. Okay, so after they go shopping, they go to a nice dinner, and he, like, gives her a love note on, like, a whole damn scroll. It's like... <laughs> I know, he's like, I couldn't just get you a card because there wasn't enough room. And I'm like, oh, man. It's, like, almost too much for me. But it's sweet. It was. It was sweet. It was... It, I think it's Aaron's love language of hyper-romantic yeah. shit, where that's not us. <laughs> No, not me at all, but Aaron seemed to really be into it, and it's ni- like it's nice to see a husband, you know, really going out of their way for their pregnant wife. I don't know. It's just yeah. nice. It was just like this whole episode was really nice, too, I think, in particular, just knowing their past and how, like, their struggles with her miscarriages and getting pregnant and how scary it's been. Like, mm-hmm. it was just, like, really nice to see like a supportive couple who genuinely wants a baby so much like have a baby it was really nice yeah yeah it, i mean with all of these big families it kind of seems like baby making is the expectation and like the thing that you have to do and you just mm-hmm. keep popping them out who cares if you actually know any of them and it was like nice that they actually cared like yeah they seem to actually like want a baby and not just yeah. like think that they have to have a baby yeah yeah exactly um, um so then we move on and kelly sends some of the older kids off to go buy baby carson some new outfits mm-hmm. at the thrift store of course because Aaron only had one baby shower i know <laughs> do you normally have more i know when she said that i was like is that that sounds like normal to me like i think sometimes like especially if a woman is like working like their work will have a baby shower for Mm -hmm. them and like so that and then they'll have another shower like with their family or whatever but like yeah i would say one baby shower is normal yeah it it seems reasonable weird to to expect more than that especially like aaron doesn't have like a job or like you know Mm -hmm. it's not like she has like an out another group of people that would want to throw her this another party you know what i mean yeah yeah like i can only kind of see it if you wanted to have like one side of the family and the other side of the family like right, do a distance right. or whatever but like right they're all there yeah so i guess they just didn't get enough clothes at the first shower the one and only shower oh god so they have to go get more and they the girls end up bringing jeb and judson which was a mistake because yeah. they are children like young children and get into everything yeah who would have thunk it but if you brought know, right? like toddlers around yeah, I know, right? They're going to get into stuff and be annoying. Mm-hmm. So after they do their little shopping, the girls drop off the clothes at Aaron's, also to kind of check in on her because she's been not feeling great and having contractions. Yeah. Um, she's ready to have the baby now, but she is not excited to do childbirth, which understandable. <laughs> yes. Can't. I, I feel like there's something wrong with you if you're really excited for the pain part. Yeah, that would I would be concerned if that were the case. Um, and then of course she tells a cute little story about how they had baby birds move into their hanging basket, mm-hmm. or he did. I don't remember who. Um, but then they had a little nest with five eggs, and now there's five little babies out there. Yeah, oh, it's like a season of of rebirth, a season of life, season of life. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on, I don't know. The next night, a few nights later, Erin finally thinks she's really in labor. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carlin has been sleeping over at Erin's house every night so that she doesn't miss the labor, which sounds annoying. It's very but... extra, but maybe it's half because Chad's been at work or something. And so they yeah, wanted to have fair. someone with her. I would get that. Um, so after the pain gets starts to get steadily worse, they, ca- they call Kelly to kind of get her opinion. Um, and then they call their doctor and their doctor advises them to immediately go to the hospital because of the high risk situation of the high risk nature of Aaron's pregnancy. Mm-hmm. And on their way out of the door, her water ends up breaking. Yep. Yeah. She's having some real hardcore contractions. 
which we find out later that's because she had a partial pl- placental abruption. Yes. Yeah. So she's going through like extra childbirth right now. Shit's going it's go, it's getting crazy and it just gets crazier. Yeah. Um uh, she gets to the hospital and she's like I need an epidural and they're like oh no you're only 1.5 centimeters dilated and then like half an hour later she's like I feel like I have to push like yeah like um, uh, it's bad. And yeah. they check her and she's like seven centimeters like a half hour later. And it's like, holy fucking shit. That's yeah. so much dilation. Yeah. Like the amount of pain, I can't imagine. And I that can't little even imagine. time. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, it's very stressful. <laughs> yeah, now it's too late to get the epidural and like there's no like she's just gonna have to deal with it. Yeah. Um and then like all of a sudden the baby is just there. Like yeah. it just out of like it just happens. She like pushed and... like once and that baby just shot out. Yep. Yeah, and um, but the baby and Aaron are totally fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like you said, she ends up. We find out that she had a placental abruption, and her labor was less than two hours total because of that. It just like I guess when you have the placental abruption, like your contractions just like go crazy and like it like gets mm-hmm. the baby out as soon. as I think possible. it's like because you're trying to deliver the baby and the placenta at the same time, and she gets yeah. really fucked up, and like your baby yeah. can die. So like. Yeah. They got lucky that that baby just shot right out of there. Yeah, definitely. It could have been really bad. So, wow. I love, I have a quote from Aaron. I would rather be dead than do that 19 times. <laughs> I know. <laughs> She's like, I thought I was going to die. I would rather be dead. Yeah. Oh, mood. But to be yeah. fair, um, I don't think Kelly had a placental abruption 19 times. Like, Mm-mm. that sounds like, no. Mm-mm. That, But that means baby number two will be like, chill. If she doesn't have one again, hopefully. she'll be like, this is so much easier. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. Um, <laughs> You never know. Yeah. But baby well, Carson is so fucking cute, by the way. Oh he is a head full of hair. He's like the most perfect looking little baby. Mm-hmm. He's so cute. Very sweet. 19 inches, six pounds, little tiny mm-hmm. bead. Tiny little beady. Um, the rest of the family comes like and they're like, wow, they weren't expecting the baby to already be there when they get there. But the baby's here. Mm hmm. Um, Michael, not Michael, Aaron, just like fucking lost it when she got Carson in her arms. Like I, mm. Mm, girl, I know <laughs> it was, it was, like I said, it's just, it was nice. To, it feels, it felt nice to like feel genuinely happy for yeah. these people having this baby. Cause usually on these funny shows, it's like, oh great. Another one. But I don't know. It felt, it felt good this time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know. It was good. Mm-hmm. But. Then all of the little kids say that they're thronkles because they're trunkles, uncles three yeah, times or, over. Yeah, thronkles. Yeah. Thronkles. Thronkles. thronkles or thronkles, either way. But they're hoping they're going to be quadrunkles. <laughs> Y'all can stop that now. Well, at least they're learning their number roots for True. geometry. True. That's all I all got. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on to episode 11 boating with the baits yeah we really went right back into i hate all of these people in this episode Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so to start off we check in a little bit with chad and aaron and baby carson um chad's mom came to help out around the house and to visit after carson was born Mm -hmm. um carson was born a month early but he was six pounds which is i mean for a month early being six pounds is pretty good my brother was a month early and he was four pounds so um, thankfully, baby Carson didn't have to be in the NICU at all. He could just come straight home. So that's really awesome. Yeah, he was fully cooked. Fully cooked and ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the next thing we do, we get a um, a crazy Burlington ad yeah. in this episode when Tori gets her gift card from her grandma and goes shopping for her good grades. And it was just like a, an overt Burlington ad. Yeah, she had to model each shirt for her family. Mm-hmm. and carlin was like i'm gonna take that one and you're like honey these are not your clothes like i know they share clothes but like let her have the new thing that she bought right right mm, yeah i'm so glad i didn't have a sibling growing up <laughs> i had one but i had a brother so like we didn't fight over the same shit yeah <laughs> you guys had your own the same shit paths. right um, so Gil and Kelly call a family meeting to go over the weekly schedule. And of course, because they're the Bates, they decide last minute to take a family day trip to the lake. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh man, we're so busy this week that we should add a trip to the lake on Monday. Exactly. 
Um, so of course, like because it's debates, it's last minute, um, and they're like scrambling to get everything together at the last minute. Um, I don't know. I just have a solitary quote from Gil, which is, everyone don't need their own personal towel. Yeah, they were fighting about how many towels to bring. And, like, just give everyone a towel. What if they get chilly? Everyone should have a towel. At least. (laughs) Everyone should have, like, a towel and a half. Exactly. Extra towels will never be bad with children. No. Um, But, of course, they get distracted from leaving because Michael's bridal pet... Brat, brat, bridal pet. Brat. <laughs> bridal party dresses come in the mail and they we get to see the khaki flower girl dress hmm. it's Beautiful. khaki it's khaki it's so khaki it's very khaki um and then as they're scrambling to go out the door they almost forget the boat plug which you know you need and <laughs> the boat butt plug <laughs> the boat boat butt plug because um, you stick it in the boat hole i mean yeah i mean what else I'm is so it sorry. it was just so funny to hear them say boat plug like four times i don't know why yeah they then it's like they have no idea anyway the boat um plug. they don't even fucking leave until lunchtime and like they're this is supposed to be like a lake day yeah like they brought they're not like staying the night shit, which like you fish at dawn and dusk yeah like what the fuck oh we get a once we get to the lake we get the you know normal like oh swimming with skirts is not that big of a deal it doesn't completely suck um i refuse to believe that they were like mm-hmm. fully clothed swimming yeah. that sound looks awful like i've had a bathing suit that had like a little skirt on the bottom yeah. part and like that fucking sucks i want to rip that off like half the time yeah but these are like legitimate like skirts and like leggings under it's like why are you guys why why are you like this exactly why? Why do you think God does not want to see your bodies? Yeah, it's it's fine. It really is fine. They're just bodies. Um, yeah. This is the first lake trip with the married couples and the grandbabies, which is fun. Mm-hmm. And then we get we get a good uh, loss and torture scene oh, right at yes. the beginning too. Yes, always good. So they have swimmers' ear plugs because they all get swimmers' ear, and Lawson doesn't plug his nose when jumping in from a fucking you know jumpy deck thing right and uh gets the swimmer's ear and fills his whole head up with lake water and now he has brain amoebas poor lawson i feel so <laughs> bad for him r.i.p no he didn't R. really R. die R. but you could they had that whole thing in north carolina last yeah. year year before last with the brain eating amoebas mm-hmm. fuck that mm-hmm. no thank you fuck wakes um and then like in the middle of you know their day it just starts to pour the fucking rain Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so they take a little break and um (laughs) they eat sandwiches they eat a whole lot of sandwiches for i guess this is probably dinner (laughs) some meal they all argue about what a lull means Uh l-u-l-l lull and um tori says it means a break and like a break and and nobody believes believed her that she knew that what it meant even though she was right like man is going to college too like that's not like a five hundred dollar word that's like a one dollar yeah, word exactly at this point like or like after the storm goes the adult couples decide to leave all the older kids want to leave because it's like fucking gross outside but gil wants to water ski because he brought the water skis yeah which i mean i get when you're like a parent and you don't get to do the fun thing because you have to do it for the kids first and then you don't, don't get to do the fun thing i get that so he does his water skiing and he sprays everyone on the dock like he does every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't really have much else to say about this episode. Um, the only other thing was that there was a huge clap of lightning and thunder that happened really close to them when it was storming. And oh, it scared yeah. the shit out of everyone so much so that Tori threw her sandwich into the boat. <laughs> and everyone got so mad that she threw the sandwich into the boat and she was everyone was screaming. It was so much. It was a lot, but I I feel like 100% I would throw my sandwich in the boat. Like, I get easily scared, startled very easily, and I scream and, like, jump, and so there's no telling what's going to happen. I don't scream, but I think I almost am worse than that because Chris always yells at me because whenever I get startled, like, you know, we're out driving or something, and I think something's going to hit the car or whatever, I just go, (gasps) he's yes. like what and i'm like there was a squirrel on the side of the road and he's like oh my god i make all kinds of weird noises when kyler's driving because i have so much anxiety with driving mm-hmm. and he 
is not always the most cautious driver. Like, and he's not like a bad driver, but he's just not as cautious as I am in particular. Mm-hmm. And he, I will always be like, <gasps> <laughs> making like crazy. And he's just like, he just ignores it. He just is used to it by now. Yeah, Chris still isn't used to it. I think because he's also an anxious. He's an anxious passenger, but a bold driver. And I'm like, See, why can't you have any empathy for people like you? <laughs> See, Kyler has no anxiety at all in his body, not an ounce. I so know. he just does stuff like he doesn't even think about it. He just does stuff raw. It's disgusting. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Gross. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> okay, That's so moving on to, to episode 12, The Quest for the Dress. The Quest for the Dress. Say yes to The Quest for the Dress. <laughs> Say um, heartily, thou, one shall go on the quest for the dress. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. I was trying to do, like, a Holy Grail thing. I loved it, though. It got fucking weird. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> You're, it's, this is a weird show. It's fine. Hell yeah. Um. So, starting out this episode, the family is in North Carolina for Kelly's sister Beth's wedding shower. Mm-hmm. So, while they're in town, they decide to stop by Aunt Kim's house, who's also Kelly's sister, to go over Michael's wedding flowers. Mm-hmm. And um, they decide, based on her budget and what she wants, to just do silk cherry yeah. blossoms and silk bouquets, everything silk. Because, like, Which... the whole thing about cherry blossoms is that they only bloom for, like, a week. Yes. Ever. Right. And, like, they're just getting married three months later. Like, if you wanted to have a cherry blossom wedding, why didn't you just... I mean, I know wait it's because year. they want to have sex, but just wait until, yes. like, the next April. Exactly. It's not uncommon to be engaged a year. I was engaged a year and it was yeah. didn't even feel that long. It did not feel that long. No, it felt quite short. Yeah, like planning a wedding is I mean, it's a it's a thing. Yeah. I, it, it wasn't bad having a year long to do it. It was that felt it felt like a good mm-hmm. pace, you know. Anyway. Yes. So they got their silk flowers figured out, which mm-hmm. is good. Nice. And then they kind and of then... panic that they have sixty two days left till the wedding. Which, yeah, that's not much. No. Not much. Kelly's sister Beth is getting married one month before Michael. Actually, she's getting married on my birthday, July 18th. Hell yeah. Also, Jim Bob Duggar's oh, fuck. birthday. But it's yours now. You took it. It's mine. It's my birthday and Beth's wedding day. And um, we talk a little bit about Beth. She is adopted along mm-hmm. with her sister Becca. And they're about the same age as Aaron. Mm-hmm. And so while like they're technically aunts, yeah, they're much more like cousins like in cousins, that relationship. Right. right. Um, Beth is marrying a man named Geronicky, and my phone hated typing that word <laughs> on my notes. It was like Geronimo, Geronimo, and I'm like, stop, stop. <laughs> my, fo- I when I take notes, a lot of times I'll um like dictate them, mm-hmm. and and my phone does not like Gil. I don't know why. <laughs> it always says girl. And so my my notes will always just say girl and Kelly. And I'm just like, okay, well, at least I know what it means. It doesn't, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Um, they did the toilet paper wedding dress shower game mm-hmm. that everyone's heard of. And they described it to us like no one's ever heard of this game before. Right, right. <laughs> um, and I loved that Gil ended up taking the toilet paper home yeah. that they used so he could use it at home. Yep. That's, it's because it's the soft stuff. I mean, yeah. He's going to, like, hoard that in a little bag and take it to just his bathroom. I hate I hate the thought of this. Just for pooping. Just for pooping. <laughs> okay, so back in Tennessee, Chad and Aaron take little baby Carson to get his professional newborn baby pictures done. And he's so cute. It and was so cute. And I don't know why yeah. everyone in the talking heads were being such a shit on this show, being like, mm-hmm. I don't know why they take pictures of the baby's nude. I don't know why they take pictures of newborns. They don't yeah. do anything but sleep. And I'm like, because they're little and I cute. S- I see that take a lot online and I don't understand it because, like, I don't think people understand, like, your baby is only that little for, like, days. Yeah. Like, b- babies change so fast and you want to, like, document their whole life. And I un- I completely understand getting like professional newborn baby pictures taken and like i don't know it's like that seems less know. weird than engagement photos to me honestly yeah i agree it's like I up agree. on the level of like wedding photos mm-hmm. yeah like it's your baby like i'm 
I'm going to be taking pictures of my baby. You best believe it. Yeah. Um, okay. So, but anyway, baby Carson is literally like so fucking cute. I cannot mm-hmm. handle it. And this photographer was so good with the baby. She like, was. Man, most baby, baby photographers just kind of have to like wait it out. But this mm-hmm. one's like, I'm just going to touch this baby's face and say, gentle. <laughs> yes and like she had like the baby touch to her like she just like knew how to like calm she's, a baby <laughs> she's parcel tongue but but for babies that's a useful skill especially if you're a newborn baby photographer yeah should be like that and nick you doctors that, that's what you get to do if exactly you can speak baby yes um okay so michael is going wedding dress shopping and takes a bunch of the girls with her pretty much like everyone is there. the whole gaggle too many people if you ask me yeah so many people to give opinions on your wedding dress yeah and that's and it's hard too because wedding dress shopping like ultimately if you go shopping for somebody else's wedding dress like it really doesn't matter what you think about it like you're just there you're supposed to be there just to support them and like help them find what they want Mm -hmm. but um when you have this many people especially a lot of like like Tori and Carlin 16 year old 16 year olds you know with opinions it's just a mess yeah um it was a lot I don't think she should buy everyone but I get it everyone will feel yeah, very I mean, shunned if you don't right I mean yeah it would be hard to like pick and choose yeah you know like only the big girls get to come or only right. the little girls get to come right anyways I don't know um so they waited this long because they didn't want to look for a dress while Brandon was in town because she wanted to spend all of her time with Brandon which I get but but also like wedding dresses are an important part and usually take a long time and so yeah like you should have done it before he came before he came yeah um but she wants a modest simple dress with a train Mm -hmm. that's her criteria and she says make me look skinny and i'm like baby girl you are skinny you are skinny yeah (laughs) you don't need anything to help you look skinny you look Uh -uh. perfect the way you are so they try on a bunch of dress. The first dresses they try on, the first dress they try on is a ball gown. Mm-hmm. And she likes it, but doesn't like how poofy it is. I'm already, like, at this point, I'm already starting to get really annoyed with Tori because she just, like, will not shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On this one, she thankfully got got it right because mm-hmm. Michael was like, oh, I hate this. It's too poofy. I hate this. It makes yeah. me look like a poofster. And yeah. yeah. But of course, second dress. Tori has to say shit again. Yeah. Yep. Pretty much every dress. Yep. She tries on an A-line. No one really likes it. Um, a dress too fitted. Um, didn't like the fabric. Let's see. She dresses. She likes the style, but not the actual dress. So she starts feeling very discouraged after trying on, like, a bunch of dresses because mm-hmm. nothing is really hitting what she wants. Yeah. But then. But then. She comes out in the last dress. Which is pretty much perfect, but a little too poofy. But obviously, like, you can take the po- some of the poof out. That's yeah. always a You can de-poof. And they said they were going to use some of the poof for the sleeves. Yes. But the dress ends up being expensive. It's, yeah. like, $1,600 for the dress and then, like, 400 for alterations. Which, like, is... I mean, that's, like, a normal, I would say, a pretty normal price for a dress nowadays. Mm-hmm. But, like, for the Bates family, for the Duggar family, like, I would... That's a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't do it. I spent, mm-hmm. I think, like 150 on my dress because I was just like, I'm going to wear it once. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to want to wear it again. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. I mean, I don't, I, I think, spend the money on what makes you happy. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was like a little, mine wasn't this expensive. It was a little less, but I was like really, I just like needed a dress that I felt good in, you know, that yeah. was like important to me. Um, So I, I like get you know spending extra on a dress that like you really love and you feel really beautiful in I yeah totally if you feel that. great in it i don't care how much money it is but also i mm-hmm. don't think fucking kleinfeld should be charging ten thousand dollars for a oh. fucking dress yeah yeah that's and that's like a middle of the line dress there like they're yeah. just like crazy like i get shit. paying the people who design them and people who sew them and stuff and pay them well and fairly and it's a it's a labor intensive thing but like uh, yeah i'm not paying thirteen thousand dollars for my wedding dress sorry okay so moving right along all right do you have anything else to say about that episode or um uh, she leaves without the dress 
Yeah, so she's like doesn't have a decision, but she at least kind of like, I don't know, I guess knows what she wants. But like, it seems like you got to make a decision here, girl. Yeah, you you're got, like 60 like... days out from your wedding. You got to <laughs> just do it. Just bite yeah. that bullet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've waited too long to be picky now. You mm-hmm. got to, you know. All right. So episode 13 is Addie and Ellie's pool party. Woo. So we so... call a family meeting mm-hmm. at the compound. And they always know there's an important announcement when there's a family meeting. Um, so it's that Addie and Ellie wanted a pool party for their birthdays, but their birthdays were in February and April, so it wasn't warm enough to be pooling. So now mm-hmm. they're pooling. And then they talk a whole lot about how many birthdays and shit that they've missed and not had parties yeah. for and how they're always catching up with all their kids. And I'm like, maybe you had too many children. That's probably a sign that you should have scaled back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they decide to like try to make good on some of their unfulfilled promises. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the first thing to address is that Gil promised to teach Josie to play tennis. And so he takes her to play tennis. Yep. And yeah. It, it doesn't go particularly well. No. It no. gets better. But she's, you know, she's what, like 13? So. Yeah, something like that. Not being yeah. good at something immediately is a very harsh reality. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it was nice to see, you know, Gil getting some like one on one time with, you know, it was nice to see like the parents trying to do it, even though I'm sure it's not like a super regular occurrence, but I don't know. Yeah, they're probably like, we get one 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 on one per month with each kid, and that ends up being like a year between children. Yeah, yeah. Um, And the next promise that they talked about was Kelly needs to take Trace clothes shopping. Mm hmm. Because he's too tall. He's too tall, growing out of all this shit. Um, and they kind of talk a little bit about what Trace wants to do because he has one semester left of high school. And he wants to get a job, go right into work and make money. But he doesn't want to work in trees because he doesn't like it. That's which reasonable. Is it's a yeah. scary, dangerous, buggy job. Can you imagine how much yeah. fucking bugs are in that? No, Ugh. no thanks. I, <laughs> no, I'm good. I am good. I hate outside. <laughs> I do too. I do too. Um, Kelly really tries to encourage him to take some classes at Crown, which is where Tori is going. Um, and he said he might, but he's really just looking to get a job for now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, they say that they'll pay for the first semester of his school so that if he finds something he likes, maybe he'll do it. Mm-hmm. We, of course, get a Gil crying scene when he's talking with Josie. And Josie talked about how special it is to get some alone time and doing things with her dad. And Gil cries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if you had fewer children, you'd be able to do this, like, way more often. All the time. Yeah, exactly. If you had, like, three kids, you could have, like, one-on-one every other day. Imagine that. <laughs> That's not what the Lord wanted for them, Jillian. Nope. The God Lord blessed them. the children for them. Exactly. So we talk a little bit about birthdays. For birthdays every year, Gil and Kelly take the kids out to a restaurant by themselves for their birthday, and they also get a party of whatever they want, mm-hmm. which is nice, I guess. Um, and so because Addie and Ellie wanted a pool party, they had to find a pool to use that the whole family could go to. And so Whitney's mom, Whitney is Zach's wife, um, is allowing them to use her pool for the party. Mm-hmm. I would just be like, all right, here's the pool, and then leave. <laughs> yes, I would be like, okay, I'm going to stay at a friend's house for the day. Yeah, like, oh, you guys can use it, but sorry, I've got I've got plans. I'm going to be in <laughs> anywhere but here. <laughs> exactly. Um, um, this was very funny because, again, Bundy men are not prepared. So Gil mm-hmm. bought cake mix instead of cakes to bring to a pool party at someone Mm -hmm. else's house yeah um so kelly has to go to the store in the middle of the party to get a made cake Mm -hmm. and um yeah yeah so (laughs) but they do um praises before presents which is where every kid gives the like birthday kid a compliment which i thought was like is a nice thing to do yeah yeah you know, i mean it's, it's not a bad parenting strategy to mm-mm. give people kind of a boost of what they've done right the past year yeah. of their lives it's just like with this whole family like you have to think like this is like the only attention they're getting all year 
you know mm-hmm. like yeah. not great but it is nice to see it happen at least once yeah i mean this doesn't happen in the duggar household i don't think so mm-hmm. if we're using them as the baseline right Bates which, are a step up above duggar yeah that is the truth that is the ultimate truth which i mean is not that hard Mm-mm. to be a step up from the duggars but god this next episode this whole next episode episode 14 hello dollywood oh yeah just so much so much in this one it was so much and this was the episode that really started to feel like really tlc to me because they started doing recaps like they were going to commercial Mm -hmm. like of what's coming up and i was like what the fuck yeah yeah so we have to see like the same clips like four different times in the same episode yeah which thankfully some of those clips were Mm -hmm. worth it yeah yeah so Lawson was asked to perform at Dollywood's Bluegrass Festival, and the family will also be performing there. Uh, the whole family's going, including John and Alyssa and baby Allie. And this is the first time that the whole family's been there since baby Allie was born, which is mm-hmm. exciting. Um, they get this huge cabin that's huge. four stories tall. It's mm-hmm. huge and dangerous. <laughs> Very dangerous. Yeah. Um. They But on their way there, they do some practicing in the car because, quote, yeah. in normal Bates style, we've only practiced about twice. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's great. Um, but once they get to the cabin, John and Alyssa and are already there and they all fight over baby Abby, ba- Abby, Allie, sorry. Mm-hmm. And like you said, the, the cabin is like fucking crazy big. The kids are it has an elevator. Crazy. Yeah, that they break within a few hours of being there, by the of way. Course. Yes. Um, yeah, they have to immediately call a family meeting over safety rules because things need to be established. And they tell this fucking story about how yes. when Isaiah was three, he fell into the fucking sea because he leaned on some bars and they mm-hmm. rusted through from the seawater and he fell through. And so he broke three ribs, got blood on his brain, fractured some bones but didn't die because three yeah, olds are the way they, The way they were talking about it, they were like, oh, yeah, but he was fine. But he, you know, fractured his ribs. He had a brain bleed. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, they're like, he only fell a few stories. Yeah, it's like, um, excuse me? Yeah, I think they were like, yeah, he fell like four stories. Like, oh, just casual. Yeah, you just dumped your baby off of a fucking, like, bank building, basically. Jesus. I mean, <sighs> just nuts. <sighs> So the first day they're there, they get ready and go to the Dixie Stampede that evening. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they have trouble like wrangling all the kids together because they can't find them all in the house because yes. the house is so big. Um, yeah, Dixie Stampede, which I think now is called Dolly Stampede because obviously, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's it's horses, it's horse stuff, mm-hmm. it's a horse show. It's mm-hmm. very exciting. Everyone's very excited about the fire hoop and the horses jumping through it, people oh, dancing yeah. on horses horse dancing i i went to dixie stampede when i was a kid how was it it wasn't for me fair i like horse i mean it stuff. was fun it was fun but like i don't know i i just remember like i went to gatlinburg a couple times as a kid and i fucking hated it every time i went and so i was probably just like not in a good mood that's I was fair. A very angsty child i get it me too yeah yeah it's hard to be um, a kid <laughs> Oh, we get to hear uh, Lawson yodeling, though, which was awful. It was. It was so bad. Um, so then they had this, like, I don't know, I just want to call it like a halftime show <laughs> where yeah. they all competed with buckets of water, I had to pour water in the buckets. Yeah. I don't know. And they it, had to win something. Yeah. It was weird, but some of them won, I think. I don't yeah. Know. It, Trace, Lawson, and Nate all were on the winning team. Mm-hmm. And so then they went back and talked to some of the stampede riders, including Shadow, the trick rider. Shadow. That's a cool name. Who? I'm adding that to my baby name list. Hell yeah. Shadow. Could, I love it. What could you have? You could have like a shadow and like a light. Shadow and light twins. Oh, I love it. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, um, go on. Oh, I was going to say, they kind of like jokingly talk about Trace working at the Dixie Stampede because he loves horses and stuff. And he's like super into it. God, I think he might actually apply and try to do it. I know. I know. He really seemed to be Because like the Dixie Stampede like manager dude came out there and was like, you know, we're looking for new people. 
Yeah, yeah. Jesus. God, is I that mean, what I he's guess, gonna do? I mean, I guess whatever works for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Guess it's All a step right. up from a carny. True. <laughs> Very true. You're a horse carny. Ew. Sounds weird. <laughs> I don't like that. It's not great. It's not great. It's not great. All right. So the next day, it's time to go to Dollywood, mm-hmm. which I went to Dollywood too, and I enjoyed going to Dollywood. I've never been, but it's on my list of things to do because I like Dolly. I love Dolly. We got. Did you get Moderna? Yeah. We got Dolly vaccine. We did, yeah. They're, they have a. Sh- I saw. I found a shirt on Etsy that was like, I got the Dolly Parton vaccine or something, and I kind of want to get it because I love yeah. Dolly Parton. I want to get a mask that says that I got the Dolly Parton I, vaccine because I'll oh, say yes. that I'm vaccinated and also I got the Dolly so, Parton one. Yes, exactly. Um. Okay. So God, they go on the rides. The first one they go on to is called like the Fire Starter Fire. Mm-hmm. something i can't remember my phone auto corrected it to the firecracker so i don't remember it's gone from <laughs> i me don't forever. know i don't have the name of it but something like that but basically the big kids are paired up with the little kids to go and make them feel safe and comfortable and immediately the big kids don't tell the little kids that they're going on a scary ass roller coaster and traumatize the fuck out of them yeah for real this was not not thought out well like that's not you can't do that no you can't trust 16 year old girls not to be cruel my that like something similar happened to me at, as a kid i went to king's island with my one of my old like older cousins mm-hmm. and he like didn't trick me but like kind of blackmailed me into going on this like really scary roller coaster and it was like fucking traumatizing for me yeah so, oh my god i yeah. feel this i had the same kind of experience with one of my like childhood friends babysitters i think she was like you know 18 or whatever yeah she yeah. just like bailed on us in the thing in the uh, at the theme park too so like we were just there like nine-year-olds by ourselves at a giant theme park (laughs) jesus christ no thank you Uh, how we didn't die i don't know but callie is basically doing this whole ride just yelling no no please stop it please stop it and she's trying to get out and jump out yeah that's scary and she kept talking about how her stomach hurt and it's like this this girl's about to throw up and it's gonna be awful thankfully she didn't but oh i felt really bad for her though like that's I know, and then of course they continue to tease her, like, "Ha ha, yeah. do you want to go again?" Yeah, it's like, no, no, not cool. You're supposed to be comforting and not a shithead. Yeah, I just don't. You I just just be nice to people. Well, come on, you don't, don't have to be a haze your siblings for real. Save it for college. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not when they're little. Kelly's scared of heights, so she usually like gets out of going on roller coasters by holding babies, but they decide to make her go on a roller coaster yep the soaring eagle the wild eagle whatever it is it's so, yeah one of the ones where your feet dangle mm-hmm. it's a hardcore roller coaster it is and it was terrifying yeah yeah she didn't like it i think she almost broke gill's arm which was mm-hmm. great the photos were worth it <laughs> yes but she said she's never doing it again which that's fair i mean i love fair. roller coasters but i went on a roller coaster like two years ago and i don't know if i'm gonna go on roller coasters being over the age of 25 i was gonna say i liked them a lot as a as a like teenager but i get really bad motion sickness right now mm-hmm. yeah and sometimes it just it depends on the type of roller coaster yeah. but yeah i i definitely not as much as i used to yeah, most of the time it's like, oh, why do my arms hurt the next day? Because mm-hmm. you've been like crushed by the thing or like slammed yeah, against like the side. You're like, why around. do I have these 18 bruises? Yeah, it's hardcore. Hardcore. <laughs> so, amidst all of the fun roller coasters at Dollywood, their performance is looming. And they kind of, it's like a whole bluegrass festival. So they see like some of the performers and they're like, oh shit, some of these people are really good. Like maybe we should practice a little bit more. Which I thought was really funny. Um, yeah, like maybe you should practice for a performance that you've been invited to do. And I feel like probably had some monetary change of I'm hands. Sure. Or they paid sure. for their stay there or whatever. Like, Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like you guys need to practice. That's yeah. kind of expected. That's your end of the bargain. Right um so but while they're practicing a storm rolls in um and so they announce that they're kind of have to hold off the bluegrass festival and it's kind of a bit touch and go for a second there Mm -hmm. um but eventually the rain does clear up and the baits 
can finally perform. Yep. And they were only about 30 minutes delayed. Mm-hmm. Everybody was not wearing matching outfits this time. They really put more effort into that dance one at the beginning. Yeah. The first yeah, season. They really, they really did not care about this at all. Mm-mm. Um, yeah. Lots of Fox News vibes talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank of, the Lord. Thank the Lord to live in America. <laughs> yes. Yep. The family does, the family sings God Bless America, don't they? I think. Yeah, I think it was God Bless America. Yeah. It was their it's their patriotic medley. Mm-hmm. And then um the bigger kids continue onwards. So Carlin does her yodeling and mm-hmm. then she makes Lawson sing a song called Pork Rinds about leaving a girl because she wants him to stop eating pork rinds. Yeah. Great. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Um but yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. We yeah. kind of end the season by reflecting on things they're looking forward to, like Brandon and Michael's wedding. Um, Aaron and Chad are already ready for another baby. Yeah, I know. It was last so, episode. She's like, I want to die before I do that again. And then she's like, he needs a little brother. Yeah, and it's like, okay. But again, typical fundies, they say, well, before we have another baby, we got to sleep. And then we have to learn how to be parents. It's harder than we thought. She should learn how to be parents before your parents. I mean, like, obviously, some of, like, the parenting, like, comes with, like, having the baby and being a yeah. parent. But, like, there are things you can prepare for before the baby's here. Give don't me a couple books. That. Yeah. Um, And then maybe don't have a second kid until you're confident with the first one. That That's a big one, I would say. Because adding the second one just means more lack of sleep. and Exactly. You got two schedules to work on. That yeah. aren't yours, not just one. Yep. That's it. But That's yeah, all I got to say I about think, them for this season. I know. I think that, that wraps it up. But I mean, I it's just it's nice to be back and shitting on Fundies where I belong. Yeah. It's been an experience, y'all. It's been it good. Has. It has been good. But I think we're planning to continue on with the baits. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you guys have any suggestions for things that you would like us to watch or cover or talk about, if you have anything to say about this episode, about any of our past episodes, or if you just want to say hey, you can email us at tvliterate at gmail.com. And you can find us all over the internet at TV Literate. We're on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, Reddit, Patreon, everywhere. Just look for us and you can send us stuff there or message us. Um, we get quite a few messages on Instagram and we love to read them and it's so cute. I don't know. Yes. We just love you guys. Thanks for listening we- for to us. We literally like love hearing from you guys. It makes our day whenever we hear from one of you guys. And yes. yeah, if you guys have a minute also and you would like to leave us a review, that would be great as well. Um, and we will be back next week with another episode. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.